In the lynda.com course, Android SDK, Local Data Storage, I described a couple of different ways of processing XML in Android. I described the use of third-party libraries, but I also described a built-in feature of the Android SDK called the XML Pull Parser class. This is a class that's fast, has a low memory footprint, and does a forward-only read of an XML packet. You can use XML Pull Parser to do very fast parsing of XML formatted content. I'm now working in the project Parse XML, which has all the code I've built previously, but also has a new class in this new package, com.hanselandpedal.catalog.parsers. The name of the class is flowerxmlparser.java. After importing the project, open this file. This file is finished. Because I've taught how to use XML Pull Parser previously in another course, I'm not going to go through all of the details here, but I will review all of this code and explain how it's working. First, at lines 18 through 21, I'm establishing a few variables that I'll need. The XML Pull Parser works through the XML content from top to bottom and it's up to you to come up with logic to keep track of where you are. So the Boolean flag in data item tag will tell me whether I'm in a data item I care about. And the string field current tag name will let me know which tag I'm currently in. The flower object will contain the current data object I'm working on. And flower list will be a list of all the flower objects that I'm collecting. Next, I set up the parser. I start by creating a factory object. From that, I create the parser. And then I set the parser's input. When I call this static method I'm in right now, which is named parse feed, I'm receiving a string value, which I've named content. At line 25, I'm passing that value into a string reader object and passing that to the parser. And now I'm ready to parse the XML content. Next. I'll work through the XML content. The XML pull parser generates events, once for each start tag, once for each end tag, once for text, and also for attributes. For this content, because it's very simple XML, I only care about the start tags, the end tags, and the text events. So the while loop lets me move through the content, and when I hit a start tag, I save the current tag name. Then I find out whether I'm starting on a new product or a new flower. And if I am, then I set that flag appropriately and I create a new instance of the flower class and add it to my list. In the end tag event, I check whether I'm leaving the current product. And if I am, then I set in data item tag to false and clear the current tag name. And finally, the text event is where I'm collecting all of the data. I have a switch statement that looks at the current tag name and then checks whether it's an element that I care about. For each of the data elements within the product, I then save that value to the current flower object. For most of the cases in this switch statement, I get the text value and save it to the plain old Java object, but two of them require special handling. The product ID has to be parsed as an integer and the price has to be parsed as a double value. And that's pretty much it. At the end of the while loop, I call the parser object's next method to move to the next event. And when I'm done reading the XML, I leave the loop and return the flower list object. If I encounter any problems along the way, I return null. And it'll be up to me in my main activity class after I've called this method to check whether I got data back. So now let's go to the main activity class. Currently, I'm retrieving the data from the feed and then just dumping the data onto the text view. Let's see that in action. I click the action bar item and I get raw XML displayed in the app. So let's change the code to use my XML parser class. I'll go down to my async task that's managing the download and I'll go to on post execute where I'm calling update display. I'm going to add some code here so that I'm parsing the XML content in the onPostExecute method. Remember that at the top of this class, in the previous movie, I had declared a list of flower objects that I called flower list. 
Now I'll populate that variable by calling my new flower XML parser class and its parse feed method. And I'll pass in the result variable. This is the raw XML that I'm getting back from the feed. So that's it. I've parsed the data and I've saved the data persistently in this activity. Now I'll update the display. I'm going to refactor this method, update display, so that I'm no longer passing content to it. I'll remove the value that I'm passing into it. Then I'll go to that method and I'll change the method signature so it's not expecting any parameters. Next, I'll check to see whether the flower list is null. I'll use an if statement and set the condition to flower list not equal to null. Then within the conditional code, I'll use a for each code template. This will allow me to loop through the list of flowers. For each flower in the list, I'll append some content to the output. So I'll take this code and move it into the for loop. And then instead of a message variable, which no longer exists, I'll output the flower's name using flower.getName. Now, there are still a couple of problems in this code because I changed the update display method so it doesn't receive any parameters. I can no longer call it the same way in methods like on pre execute and when I publish the progress. So I'm just going to comment out those calls to the method in on pre execute and in on progress update. And now I'm ready to test the code with the XML parsing in place. I'll run the app in the emulator, click Get Data, and there's the result, the list of flowers displayed in the text view where previously I saw raw XML. So that's how you can parse XML using the XML pull parser. Again, you can use any XML processing tools you want to that are compatible with Android and I described how to use some other tools in that other course. But XML Pull Parser is built into the Android SDK. It's fast, it has a small memory footprint, and while it might take a little bit of code to get it working with your particular XML structure, once it works, it's fast and it's simple.